quick video. I wanted to uh, take you guys on a quick little tour on how to properly set up an LX90 in pull-up mode. Now, as everybody can see from the telescope, and uh, my wife Donna, say hi Donna, because she's running the camera. Say hi. Okay, she's camera shy, everybody. But anyway, as you can see right here from the, uh, the telescope right now, we are in polar mode with the LX90 utilizing the uh, wedge and all the hardware equipped with that. And basically what we're going to do tonight is we have to, uh, every time you move your telescope either from the alt as position over to a wedge position, you have to train the drives and calibrate your drives accordingly every time. If you don't do that, you're not going to point accurately and you're not going to track accurately. So right now we have the telescope in polar mode. And that's another thing you can see, I have everything on the telescope. That's another point I want to make to you, you guys real quick. Every time you train your drives on a telescope system, always make sure you have everything on the telescope that is going to be utilized for your observing session. For example, obviously we have the diagonal, I have my eyepiece, naturally you're going to have your star finder on here to help locate targets, and I always employ my neat dew shield. Now, the dew shield doesn't weigh, doesn't weigh that much, but it does weigh something with it coming out this way, it does kind of make the telescope want to go down and up, okay? That's another reason why I have my weights on here. As you guys can see in this, this video, I no longer have the Orion uh, Short Tube 80 refractor along with the ADM mounting hardware on top. Reason being, the Mead LX90s, now it's just the LX90s, not the LX200s. The LX200s can handle the weight just fine, but the LX90s, for some reason, they always perform better in polar mode when they are in their stock configuration. Basically, what I've done is taken all that weight off the top of the telescope so it'll track better in polar mode. I have tried it with the refractor on there. It's very jumpy. The telescope gets the shakes, and it does not want to track very well. However, when the telescope's in its stock configuration, it tracks like a charm. So basically, the first thing you always want to do is calibrate your drives. I've already done that. And basically, what, 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 a calibration, is what calibration is telling your computer what weight is the servos dealing with? Well, obviously, it has the dew shield, it has the eyepiece diagonal, the focal reducer, and the finder scope. The computer takes all that into account in a calibration to make sure it's going to operate properly. So we've already done that. The second thing you're going to do, you're going to go to your, uh, either your uh, 497 controller or your audio start controller, and basically you're going to go to your train drive. Now, there's two settings on this. You have Alt and declination. Now you don't have to pay attention to the alt because we are in fact in polar mode right now. Alt is only required when you're in alt as, but we need to train the declination with the telescope itself. So right now we're going to push enter. It's going to give you a quick little message for this drive setup. Basically for this operation you want to use a terrestrial target. Do not use Polaris. I've tried that before in the past. It does not work because Polaris is too far away and the distance you you are trying to train on is not going to help the computer. You need to train on something like a street light or something preferably about a quarter mile away, which I have the telescope pointed at right now. So we're going to go ahead and push enter. It's going to ask me to center the reference object, and I'm going to verify that I do have that in the eyepiece itself. Now this is a, this is an important note. When you are training your drive, do not use the finder scope. Okay, it's too wide of a field. You want to use the main optical path in the optical tube itself. So we're going to go take a look real quick. Okay, the street light is in fact there. So now I'm going to go ahead and push enter. Now, if you, ladies and gentlemen, didn't, you, you probably couldn't see that uh, the optical tube assembly move, but you probably did hear the drives kick in. Basically, what it did was the declination moved down and up again. Basically, now it's asking me to push up on the controller until my object is centered in the eyepiece. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, we are now moving. I can see the street light coming back to the center field of view. Always make sure you get it as centered as possible for better results. Now we're there. Now it's going to ask me to push enter again. As you can see, once again, the telescope did move. This time it moved in the opposite direction in declination. Basically, what the, what the, what's happening right now is every time it kicks over, it purposely moves the object out of the field of view. And then it's going to ask you to use your arrows. Now we're going to go down to center the target in the field of view or your FOV. Okay, we are there. Enter. Now it only does it twice on declination and it'll do it twice in RA, right ascension. Okay. Now we're going to go down the arrows. Now we're going to train drive in as or RA. Again, as alt mode you don't have to worry about because the telescope is currently in polar configuration. 
we're going to worry about our right ascension train. Enter. It's going to display the same message again. Use a threshold target. Enter. It's going to ask you to center your target for reference. And we are using the same street light. I am centered in my field of view. We're going to push enter. Now we're going to train the RA drive. Okay, now it's going to ask me to push to the right on the controller. We're not going up and down on this operation because that's declination. This time we're doing right ascension. And right now the telescope is moving back in the target. Again, it's always important to make sure whatever target you choose for your training session, make sure you center it as, as best as possible in your eyepiece. Okay, now let's move it again. Now it's going to ask me to go to the left. And we're going to do that real quick. Target's coming back into view, and we are dead center right there. Now we're going to push enter. Okay, so training the drive is pretty much done now. We both we trained the drive in polar mode. We trained it in right ascension, and we also trained it in declination. So basically, what it's telling, what what it's basically doing is, if this is your telescope, it's going to go that way and that way, and up and down. And all that information I just did from those four training sessions on this computer you just watched, it's telling my memory. Well, how far this telescope needs to go to point to its target accurately. So now with a proper training done, this telescope is now set up to go ahead and be used in polar mode. Again, very important note, every time you change your configuration, whether you're going to use a polar mode for astrophotography or you're going to be in alt as mode just for casual viewing with your LX90, always make sure you do a calibration and train your drives. Okay? So that's just a quick little video I made for you guys to show you guys how simple and easy it is to do. It's not that hard. All you got to do is follow the, uh, follow the instructions on your controller. And now this thing is ready to go in polar mode. And once I, once I have performed the training in polar mode, as long as I use the telescope in, in polar mode, I mean, I can break it all down, put it away. When I set it all back up, it's still going to hold its memory. It's only when you change from alt ads. Okay? So just keep that, guys, in mind. And uh, make you guys another quick little video later on, maybe a little uh, later tonight. But uh, that's the uh, polar mode training for the LX90. Take it easy.